Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the strike in Hollywood. It's it's still ongoing because, uh, well, we talked about the situation that the talks are off between SAG-AFTRA and AMP Tip because apparently SAG-AFTRA leadership uh, wanted to put a levy on all streaming subscribers. Right, with a dollar. Well, it depends who you ask. 50 some cents to a dollar. Ask. And uh, that did not go over well with the studio heads reportedly got so angry that they just got up and, and walked out. Well, if, if it's true that they already made all these concessions, we're already offering these like huge increases and people getting residuals that never got them before. And they're bending over backwards and they turn around and be like, oh, yeah, and by the way, we want more. I, I don't yeah. necessarily blame them. I'm not saying the studios are innocent in this. No. But I also think that this is this is getting ridiculous. Yeah, and I think that's what's going on here. So apparently a bunch of stars, uh, George Clooney, Tyler Perry, Emma Stone, uh, I think Scarlett Johansson, they wanted to talk with the SAG after leaders to like, find out. what the out. flip are you doing? Pretty much. I think that's what they're doing because uh, you know people are saying, hey, Fran Drescher is the biggest holdup in Hollywood right now. You know, like they had a deal that was ready to go. Right. And then they walk in there with this, this levy. And, uh, it's not even that, that extra money, that extra 57 cents or a dollar, whatever it is, it winds up being like a half a billion, half a billion dollars. Yeah, And the money something. goes to the union. For it them goes to do with it what they want. It goes to the union. Right. It's not right? like it's being earmarked that it's going for residuals for actors or something like that. It's the union's discretionary. Yes. Money. They can do with it, whatever they want to. Now in a perfect world, uh, they would take that money and give it to, you know, uh, actors in need or whatever, or, uh, you know, allocate it in, in, in that sort of fashion. But we know how these things usually work and it usually winds up with people getting bigger salaries and, uh, you know, a nicer office and, mm -hmm. you know, more perks. And that's usually how it goes. So let's talk about this. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo. Um, I had to pull this up to the New York Times. Oh my God. Actors are going back to to uh, serving food. Working, working in, in restaurants. restaurants. If people have money to eat at the restaurants. If people have money to eat out, yes. Uh, if they have money to eat out, they can be served by a SAG after member, I guess. Um, and God forbid, we don't want that. We don't want to have actors I've never heard of, uh, you know, busting tables and whatever, you know? <laughs> so it's like, so that's, that's the thing. And there is, look, there's a huge uh, disparity between you know, a guy like George Clooney and, mm -hmm. and this actress here, I'm sure, you know, and that's just the way it is. Like same with the WGA, you have, you know, a bunch of like thousands of members and only probably a couple hundred of them work regularly. And maybe only a couple dozen of them you've heard of. Well, no more than a couple dozen. Wow. Yes. I mean, <laughs> okay. come on. that you care about, let's just say, cause like you, you throw out the name of a, a, a screenwriter or something. And most people are like, who? Yeah, that's who, true. Who the hell this is, is that? This is actors, not the screenwriters, but okay. Yeah, now we're talking actors. So let's talk about the actors. So this is an exclusive from Deadline. Some of Hollywood's biggest stars met with the leadership of SAG after today. This would have been yesterday. I just picture them like rolling out the carpet. Remember like the old uh, Looney Tunes where they all had all the celebrities walking the red carpet yeah. and whatever. It's Humphrey they do Bogart. That, but it was usually for award shows. <laughs> we rolled out the red carpet and George Clooney and Emma Stone and Ben Affleck and Tyler Perry and well, Scarlett Johansson. What was funny Johansson. to me was that they the, the SAG after won't comment on what was talked about. Okay. Yeah. Now this is kind of this. This reminds me of what happened with the showrunners in the WGA right before they made the deal. The showrunners were even kind of like, "What is the holdup? What's the holdup?" You know, I think they're like, "We gotta get back to work." What's the holdup? And then they were also like, "If this continues," they said, a couple of them threatened to quit the WGA. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if some of these bigger stars are kind of like... Don't know, because they won't talk about they're it. They're not allowed to talk about it. Not allowed to talk about but it. But apparently they, they, they you know, went and had meetings with, uh, or via Zoom, I guess, Fran Drescher and Duncan Crabtree Ireland for a, de a detailed debrief. So the the, the, the A-listers can get a detailed debrief. But, but uh, if you're one of those people busting tables, you know... Yeah, you're out of luck. You just have to go along with whatever, whatever. If you were one of them, with. you get to, you get to, you know, you pay the same dues, but they pay more percentages, so... Yeah, so they said the Oscar winners and other A-listers were particularly interested in the revenue-sharing proposals. Basically, they were interested in the straw that broke the camel's back. What the hell actually happened in that room? Because we thought everything was good, and then you threw this thing at them, and now we're back to square one. 
Fran. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Miss Fine, what did you do? What did you do? Um, so the deliberations were suspended by the studio bosses on October 11th. Throughout the discussion, Clooney, Johansson, and the rest were extremely supportive of union leaders and their stance in seeking a new three-year contract for sag after a, a source close to the situation tells uh -huh. deadline. They had a lot of questions, some suggestions, <laughs> and a lot of good feedback. It's just, all good. It's, it's all good, yeah. It's all good. We're all, I love how they, they always spin this. Like, there's no dissent in the ranks. Everybody is 100% happy with they, how but, everything but is. they have some suggestions. I've got a helpful suggestion. Close the fucking deal yeah. or get out of the way. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. You know? And you will see, and we'll, we'll go to the comments here. Because the comments, uh, there are a lot of below-the-line workers and others in Hollywood, apparently in Hollywood, commenting on Deadline, saying they're sick of this shit. They're sick of being dragged out. They had a deal. They blew the deal. Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on? People are losing their houses. Not everybody's George Clooney, you know? So, yeah. So this levy, supposedly, as I understand it, is a dollar per streaming subscriber annually. Yeah, I think it's – I hope it's annually. Um. That, that that's more that the, uh, you know, the companies are going to have to to charge then. And also they're going to get taxed on that. So if. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about the fact that they still get taxed. Well, they won't probably, they'll probably take out what they have, but they're still paying taxes on it. They're so, yeah. Cause it's so, if they have to raise everybody's subscription, another dollar. And every time they raise their prices, remember people, you know, cancel, they cancel. Every time the prices get raised, they cancel. So they're going to have to pay that in taxes too. You make an extra, you know, eight hundred or billion dollars or whatever in revenue, then you're going to pay a tax on that. And um, you know, so it was a really weird, kind of a weird ask, I think. And there was there's a whole nother conversation about the the revenue stream because basically, I think what they're mad about was the revenue sharing, as I read it, only applied to like the top shelf shows. Mm -hmm. It didn't apply to. You know, somebody working on a show nobody's watching, right? Mm -hmm. You had to be working on like a Marvel or a Star Wars or a Stranger Things or something like that. To, oh, to be you said things people are watching. They Only did. one of those things. <laughs> Stranger Things basically work on Stranger Things. So yeah, um, so they're uh, saying Amtip claimed it was an eight hundred million dollar ask. They're saying no, no, no. It was a very reasonable five hundred million dollar ask. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and again, this money is not going directly to the actors; it's going to the union, right? to decide how they're going to dole it out. Um, so yeah, they're trying to, they're basically trying to tell everybody this is fine. Everything's fine. We've made big, meaningful counters on our end, including completely transforming our revenue share proposal, which would cost the companies less than 57% per subscriber each year. Or you could just not. Or you could just not. They've rejected our proposals and refused to counter. Because it was, from my understanding, it was going to be finished. And then they just threw this out there. So this at uh, Comic-Con, uh, Crabtree, Ireland, <laughs> that name, uh, told Deadline on October 14th that uh, the couching, the, the levy was uh, preposterous. It wasn't a levy. So that's like saying workers should be compensated for their work as a tax. That's wrong. The reason that that product exists is because of their work. Well, Fair the same argument. The reason you had a job to make the product in the first place is because the studios paid all you to do it. Pretty much. When like, you work in a company and you're work for hire, you make your widgets. You don't get to, you know, you get your, 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 you know, the agreed upon amount per hour. You don't get to say, well, you'd have no widgets if I wasn't here. You know what I mean? You can say that. And it's while, while technically true, you wouldn't have a job. There'd be no widgets at all. If the company wasn't footing the bill for it. That is a very, uh, that is a very socialist take is basically, you know, what we're talking about here. And yeah. Yeah, you know, we're off, awfully, uh, people are awfully obsessed with money for being, Again, being a socialist. The big, the A-listers that were going to find out what was going on could always, you know, turn around and give all their money away to everybody else. They could, because I'm sure guys like George Clooney are some of the wealthiest people, you know, if you want to break it down, some of the wealthiest people in the country, you know, Hollywood actors, you know. Um, it's like, you guys can just take your money yeah, and give it away. Actually, there are some actors who do that, but. There are. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they said it's fair compensation, fair wages for workers, not, and it has never been, uh, or will be a tax. Well, this it will is, be a tax. It is a tax because they were already offered a, a pretty substantial well, raise. What do you call that? You need to take more money and charge an extra dollar. What do you call that? Well, that's like, um, the one, uh, county I used to work in, they had an uh, occupational privilege tax. They, yeah, they, yeah, they do that in some places. The privilege yeah. of working. It was like 10 or $12. I don't understand what else you think that like, is. What? 
Everybody, oh, every subscriber God. has to pay an amount for you for your union. That's a tax. Yeah. So look, people are getting tired of this. This is this is really interesting. These are people presumably who work in Hollywood. Uh, this is below the line crew. Teamsters and vendors have become collateral damage. Crew have been timid in this news cycle to tell their stories about bankruptcy, lost savings, lost hours to be eligible for health benefits, losing health insurance, lost retirement savings, lost houses. Yeah, I mean, if you've been out of work since like April or May, mm -hmm. you know, because the productions have ground to a halt and there's no end in sight, really. Because I, th I think what they're going to do is they're going to stall this out to the end of the year. And they're gonna be like, yeah, we basically saved a whole year's worth of production. Well, I don't think costs. they were going to. I think they were gonna agree to it, and then they threw this at them. It's them now that is screwing it up. All this is doing, according to this commenter, is creating animosity between crew and actors, mostly leadership. I can't blame Amp Tip for walking away from unrealistic requests. SAG members need to ask leadership what they're truly fighting for instead of social media talking points, ego, and airtime. Uh, Amp Tip needs to get their act together as well. Uh, this guy fed up guy or girl, even entertaining such a ridiculous idea as SAG collecting revenue share and distributing it to their members, 80% of which don't even qualify for union health insurance. So that means they're not even making enough money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, switching from a percentage to a flat fee is just a tactic to destroy dialogue. This means if a company doesn't show profit on their balance sheets, SAG still profits. That's just it. Actually, um, yeah, it's not a very good deal for the studios because it's like, we're going to have to fork over this $800 million or $480 million or whatever, regardless of how these shows do. Yeah. And they're saying, you know, the people that might benefit from it are like George Clooney. Yeah. Like, like he needs it. You're not going to. Yeah. Most people. Yeah. A uh, vast majority do not support the actors. Crews haven't worked in almost a year. Second massive work stoppage in three years. Sign the deal and get back to work. Revenue sharing is a dream. Um, yeah. So everybody's just like, we're getting pissed. And I think this was kind of going on with the writers too, that we were hearing that people were getting pissed off because they're like, we can't go back to work until you decide to go back to work. And it's not fair that we're all being held hostage, you know, because you guys won an extra buck or whatever from all that. Yeah. It's, it's like, this is stupid. Um, get a real job. Not everyone is privileged to get back to work. I don't care how this is resolved. Figure something out. The longer it lasts, the less chance there's work before 2024. Well, that's right. Cause the writers have to get everything ready too. Needs to end. SAG needs to come to the table with a realistic goal. That's the thing. I don't even know what SAG wants at this point. Like the WGA, we kind of got, it was about the writer's room. In this case, like, I don't remember the WGA throwing a curveball at the studios at the 11th hour. You know, yeah, they, it was like it was like they were gonna get it, they were gonna agree to it allegedly. And then all of a sudden this revenue, this thing came out of nowhere. Like you know, it's this this tax that's not a tax came out of nowhere. Yeah, SAG would take the levy money. There's no way to disperse this to the actors properly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If they voted on it and they said, hey, we're gonna use this for okay, they said most people can't even get union insurance. If they voted on it and then the union members would all there'd be more eligibility for union insurance because it would offset some of that. Okay, I might agree with you to go ahead and, and get that money. But there's nothing like that. <sighs> Crew, okay, get this. This is funny. That, well, it's not funny, but it's it's ironic that this actor, presumably an actor, is trying to fight with this crew member. Crews are dying out here. A deal needs to get done. At this point, we don't care who's right. All we see are millionaires fighting. Studio executives are wrong. The actors are wrong. You're more worried about your ego than people's lives. Anybody who still supports this is not a serious person. This person's like the vast majority of actors are nowhere near being millionaires. Well, uh, uh, obviously, 86% uh, of us can't even qualify for health insurance, which is only a $26,000 threshold. Wait, wait. Okay. That's your problem. You're not making enough money because you don't have work for you because you're probably not good enough. And you're not getting in because the same people who've already gotten in are going to take all the roles, especially if they cut shows. Yes. So you're wasting your time and you're expecting everybody else to foot the bill for you. Yes. So my next thing is, even if you got what you wanted, you still wouldn't be qualifying for health care. Whose yes. fault is that? Who yes. is, whose fault is that? You're, you're still going to be at below the threshold, aren't you? Oh. So what difference does it make? Everybody else is losing their houses, but it's okay because you don't get health insurance? Well, go find a job that pays you for health insurance. Apparently, there's other industries in Hollywood that you can go work in. Well, they said that. They're ah, like, me, 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 me. Yeah, this person's like, me, all, me, 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 all of us would rather be working than striking stock. Stop punching laterally and downward and punch up. This is the executive's fault because uh, they obviate they have the money to pay all of us. Stand with us and apply the pressure where it's deserved so we can finally end this and get back to work. Solidarity with the workers. How is this? But again, I don't have health insurance. Well, how is this going to change that? 
In what way does it change it? It doesn't. None of this stuff changes. I mean, there was better, more health care money, but they could have, you could have, they could have got that they signed. They didn't. So please explain how this extra money that goes to the guild and doesn't go to you guys helps you. Oh, wait, it doesn't. You literally can go work at Walmart and make more per year than what you're making as an actor. But I'm an actor. Well, somebody said that you, you only pick it three hours a day and you can work another job. 80% of you haven't taken a financial hit because you have other jobs. Your life's the same, but 100% of crews lost 100% of their income for almost the entire year. Yeah. This person's like, I'm so sorry. Yeah, this is the childish game. Uh, SAG dropped the ball. I actually have, a, I'll tell you the truth. I think the WGA was being ridiculous with their their writer's room yeah. request, right? Mm -hmm. I have a bigger, I personally have a bigger bone to pick with SAG-AFTRA mm -hmm. because they're the ones who told people like us that we weren't allowed to cover Oh yeah, they're telling other influencers you can't take the money that you might need because we we didn't until we get ours. When you get yours, they're not, they're gonna go to you and they're gonna cut everybody else out. Hey Hollywood Studios, remember who actually? I'm not. It wouldn't be us, but the you know, people that you gave money to, or people that came in and and still covered your events and still you know did you know what they needed to do. When you're handing out the money after the strikes are over. You know, remember, you know, because you don't want to hire all the celebrities for your commercials and all that kind of crap. Meanwhile, those people kept you going. Just want to point that out. Yeah. So I I, I personally have a, a bone to pick with SAG after I'd never joined. I, yeah, I love when we were threatened. If you talk about this in yeah. a negative way, you can't join the guild. Oh, damn. I can't be part of this train wreck. Well, wow. Oh, God. Hey, speaking of train wreck, Brittany and Justin Timberlake had had the abortion together. Apparently. Ooh, that's a train wreck. Um, I was going to say, it's like, what do you always say? If somebody tells you, if somebody who's a problematic person tells you is punished, but they're not going to talk to you, how is that? A, how, how are you losing? Oh. They're not going to talk to you anymore. Oh, darn. Stop. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like Basically, said, if, if somebody you have to walk on eggshells for and they're a pain in the ass to deal with and you dread dealing with them and they're like, well, I'm never going to talk to you again. I'm like, good. Good, I don't have to deal with you yeah, ever that's again. What I feel like. that's Fantastic. What I feel like about SAG after you can never join our union. Oh boy, darn. <sighs> wow. God. So this is um this is another article. This is a Hollywood reporter. You get all the way to the bottom here. And this is uh Donna Langley, who's in charge of Universal. Well, they, they were talking about all of them. They said, ultimately, yeah. WGA negotiating committee co-chair, what, I spoke to studio heads, blah, blah, blah. And the executives agreed to attend negotiations as long as needed to get the deal done. And Langley made a similar promise in appearance at the Bloomberg Screen Time event, whatever, before hours were amped to announce the studios were suspending talks. And here's my thing. We're spending time with actors, and we want to spend as much time as it takes until we can reach a resolution and get the industry back on its feet, okay? And they're like, yeah, you need to do that. There's a difference, though. There's a difference. Going in there and demanding stuff at the, at the 11th hour and then asking for more isn't them, isn't them not getting the deal done. Yeah, there was this uh, there was this game show called Press Your Luck. That's what it does. Yes, and that's no whammies. No whammies. You got a whammy. Like, yeah, and this happens like on game shows all the time. I watch this, and you can see like the person going from like, "Gosh, I hope I'm good enough to win something," to like, "I'm on a roll. I'm gonna bet it all." And it's that's like, kind Don't of do that. that's kind of what I think happened here. I think they were like, you know, okay, we're on a roll. We got them. We got them. We got the WGA. We're going to, they're going to. And while no. we got you here, we're not going to agree to it unless you give us even more. And they're probably like, no, I would have been like, no. I mean, when you read what they were giving them, I was like, holy crap, that's a lot of wins, but we're going to walk away because you didn't give us our, um, the, 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 the extra fees that are a tax, but aren't a tax. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, I, I mean, I don't know when this is going to, I mean, it could be that Look, it could be like next week they could turn around and you know be like, yep, you know what, we're going to do it. But I'm like, at this point now, if they walk this back, if SAG after actually drops that that levy, they're going to look absolutely stupid. Yeah, but they can now. Because like you said, well, it depends. People are saying drop your ego and just get it done. And that's what I think they're meaning. They'd have to, the, you know, they'd have to look silly. And to get it signed. You've lost almost an entire year. At this point, Hollywood's been down almost an entire year. And you're, you, you know what I'm saying? Like sign the damn, if it were me, I'd be like, you know what? We renegotiate every three years. We'll just sign the damn thing. And we'll try to make a better case for why we should have that next time around. But right now you're asking daddy for a pony after daddy lost his job. And daddy's not going to. You're really obsessed with this pony after someone lost their job. Did you ask for a pony once when someone lost their job? No, we had all kinds of damn horses. I hated them. I'm just like, you're obsessed with this smell pony. And they're a pain in the ass, and I had to clean them and brush them and feed them and sh shovel horse shit. Have you ever smelled horse piss? Mm -mm. Okay, well, it smells like Bud Light tastes. 
Okay. <laughs> it's not good. No, I grew up around a horse. I don't give, I'm just saying like, that's the thing. Like, oh, I'm going to ask my parents for something. It's like, yeah, well, they just lost their job. So don't, don't ask for that. And you should know better than ask for that. And yeah, things were good a couple of years ago. They're not good now. They're canceling shows before. Just take, just take the win. Cause they're literally, you're like, we're not getting our extra buck. People are losing their houses. Right. They're and losing the people, their houses. And the extra money isn't even going necessarily. To, no. they, they haven't announced how they're going to allocate it. You want support for this? You announce you're allocating it in the you know benefit of the you know, the union members, and in a really good way, like health insurance or like that. Okay, maybe I, I will see your point. But right now, it's just we want a lot of money for us, but we we, we we'll, we'll figure out who to give it to later. It's no, good. don't ever trust that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about how uncomfortable it was going to be for Drew Barrymore to go back to her show when her writers quit. Right? How uncomfortable. Is it going to be for you actors to go back to work when maybe, uh, you know, the lighting guy or the makeup well, person lost their house that's what because gets of me. you? That's what gets me. You know? The way they talk, the way they talk, they're like, well, if it wasn't for us actors, we wouldn't have shows. And I'm like, bitch, if it wasn't for all the people making the shows that don't get the FaceTime, y'all wouldn't have a job. No. Because you can go out there and you can show up and be like, look how pretty and, and questionably talented I am. But then you have all these other people that are the ones making you look good. They're, they're doing the costuming, the wardrobe, the makeup, people doing every, pretty much everything, you know, to make the movie. But they don't get the, they don't get the recognition you get. And they do as, they do as much, not, but they do way more. Let's, I mean, let's be fair. People, you know, doing the, the, the post-production shit, all that stuff. You just show up for three months, do your job. Then you go walk the red carpet and get your awards and all this other shit. But these people are the ones who, who are making sure you get there and get, it gets done. Making sure you get your ass fed, you get your makeup done. Whoa. Somebody comes, somebody comes over and make sure they get you from your trailer to make sure you're where you're supposed to be on time. Hold your little handy. And then you're going to sit here and be like, well, we're the actors without us. I'm like, bitch. And that's gender neutral, bitch. Gender neutral, bitch. Sit and spin. Yeah, I think they're going to be told to sit and spin by some of these crew members when they, whenever they get this deal done. I, I really do. Are we going to wrap it up? Yeah, sorry. Let's oh, ride. I hate I that arrogant show pony bullshit attitude. Pony, there's ponies again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> with the brushable hair, angry brushing. Uh, no, make, I might need to be brushing hair after this. This pony's gonna be bald by the time I get done with it. I do have some ponies to brush. All right, so let's wrap it up. Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.